The race is on to build the first passenger drones. Startups and aerospace companies across the world are trying to turn the vision of flying taxis from science fiction into reality. It was a kind of airborne magic feeling. It was a really, really great moment for everybody I see. I would think the first air taxis will start flying commercially in 2020. In this lab, a flight control system for passenger drones is being developed. So we are now here in your lab at the Technical University of Munich. What makes passenger drones possible? Breakthrough innovations in electric propulsion, safe and secure communication and navigation, and in safe automation are the enablers of this new domain of aerospace. So here we see your flight simulator, where you test all your flight control dynamic systems. How do you guarantee safety for air taxis? So we are applying the same methods, uh, processes and tools like you would do for the development of large passenger airplanes. Safety is ensured by certification and regulations and especially Europe with the EASA has put up very high safety standards. Scheduled airport shuttles and on-demand air taxis carrying one to four passengers for up to 50 kilometers could be a reality in a couple of years' time. Short intercity flights may also be available. Passenger drones would benefit society as a whole. Well, clearly beyond individual passenger transport, there's more, I would say, community type of services. Emergency or ambulance services is probably the best example. So this is one of the first vertical takeoff planes here at the Aviation Museum in Schleisheim. Technology-wise, what needs to come together these days to make vertical aviation possible again? I think aerodynamics and physics are still the same, but you have to think different about the propulsion. All these uh, propulsions are zero emission propulsion, and that means no pollution. And zero emission then also means a different business model, meaning thinking totally. more from a customer perspective. Totally agree. Uh, the customer has to be really in, in the middle of, of everything. And if you understand the customer, then you understand the service and also the infrastructure. We have to really develop that with the, with the government together, where the um, takeoff and landing areas make sense for the big cities. Urban air mobility is a complex system. It's not just about an aircraft but many pieces around that. You need to set up a whole infrastructure consisting of uh, uh, landing sites, so-called vertiports, um, tra air traffic management systems, control systems, and uh, charging infrastructure. With these measures in place, within the next 30 years, 100,000 passenger drones could be in service. They're expected to fly in 100 cities across the world. Based on my point of view, it would be either aerospace companies that produce this kind of drones in the beginning and then it will be a partnership between automotive companies and aerospace companies in order to produce those drones cost efficiently and for the mass market. At Roland Berger we combine an unmatched expertise in aerospace, automotive, transportation and operations. We are excited to discover the third dimension of urban mobility with you.